Hello people, it's me, TaylorMade Gaming, back at you once again with another video. And today we have got episode 1 of a brand new local to global series here on Total Extreme Wrestling 2020. King William Regal has been fired from the WWE for arguing with Vince McMahon about NXT call-ups being wasted when they go on to the main roster. So he has come back to the UK and he's set up his very own company, Premier Wrestling Championship. So, yep, and he started it with £1 million of English-British money, and he has signed only UK talent, because not only has he set up this new company, he has also given himself some rules to make it a little bit more difficult. Let's have a look at what he's got, and let's just get rid of me for one second. And so you can see that his rules are sign only local workers. So only people that are live or live or based in the region where we are currently working. And so we're starting this save in the UK. So only UK based wrestlers are allowed and no big name NXT UK signings. So we're not going to be stealing the likes of Walter, Finn Balor, Adam Cole, anybody else that is a big name in NXT UK. We don't want them. We are at war with NXT UK. So we're not going to be signing any of their people. And then number three, which is a big one, we can't move to a new area in the world. So we can't start doing shows in a new part of the world until we are top three in our current region. And so, like I say, we're starting in the UK. Next step will be Europe. And then after that, maybe Oceania, maybe India. Not quite decided what one's going to come first. But America is going to be the last region we want to try and get to in this save. So, yep, like I say, Europe, then Oceania or India, then Japan, and then America, hopefully at the end, if we can get there. And now let's get me back on the screen. Hello! And so... So we have got the first show tonight, which I have called PWC New Empire Rises. I quite like that name, so I think that's quite cool. And so, if you've got a wrestling show, what do you need? Uh, wrestlers, referees, announcers, all of that good stuff. And so I have been a busy, busy little bee signing people. And as you can see... I've signed quite a few people. These are all on, uh, what do you call it, deals? Handshake deals, mostly, I believe. Yep, handshake deals. So you can see here, we've got a lot of people, most of whom, I'm going to be honest, I don't know who they are. I've only signed them based on their popularity in the game, their UK-based popularity. So if any of you are big fans of any of these people as I go down through them, which I'm only going to do quickly. But if you are a big fan of them, please let me know. And please link me to any good matches or anything of that, just so I can build up more of an understanding of who these people are. But yep, we're going to go through this quickly now. We've got Alex Gracie, Alexi Falcon, who's, who's a redhead and who's quite hot. So she might be getting pushed quite a lot. Uh, Ashley Dunn, we've got, I think we've got his brother as well, a bit further down the list, I do believe, or that might be someone else. And then we've got Boneshaw, who looks very scary. And then Cara Noir, I love Cara Noir's look. So we've got him in, He's, he could be a star for us, because I do really like his makeup look and all of that. Chris Brooks, we've got, Chris Ridgway. Uh, Chuck Mambo, Damian Corvin, Dan McGee, Danny Jones. We've got a lot of Dans. Uh, Darren Kearney, Dean Allmark. 
Debbie Keitel, who looks very good. She is. She might be our first women's champion in a couple shows' time. I don't know yet. But let me know who you would like to see being our first champions. Because I don't think we're going to be booking any champions on this first show. That might be a thing for two or three shows time. But yep, Debbie Catel, Drew Parker, Gene Money, Gideon Gray. Who again looks very scary. He's got a sort of Vin diesel is look, I think. I can see a lot of Vin Diesel in him. But I can also see him being quite a... No, not mythical, but maybe like an Alistair Black type character. Maybe that's what we might do with him. And then after that, we've of course got one of the people I have heard of. That is, of course, Grado, the legend of British wrestling. And then after him is, is it Iestin Rees or Estin Rees? Well, whoever, whoever you pronounce it, he is a 35-year-old white Welsh male guy. So, yep. We've got him in, Jamie Hayter. She's another one who could be in line to be the first women's champion. Jim Hunter. We've got Joe Nelson, who surely that's not a recent photo because he looks about 12. Surely we can't be having him in the ring. But, okay. John Myers. Kid Lycos. Kid Lycos, again, I really like his look. As you can tell, I like these big character kind of guys. These guys who really stand out. And so I do like his look. Lana Austin, Lee Hunter, who I believe is the brother of Jim Hunter, Liam Slater, Little Miss Roxy, who's got a little bit of an a little, little bit of an Alexa Bliss look about her, I think. LJ Cleary, Martina, where have we gone? We skipped past her. Martina, who I'm just starting to learn about, and I think she's very decent. So we've got her, Nathan Martin. Olsen Delaney, Prince Amin, who could be very good. He's one I have seen from What Culture Pro Wrestling a few years back. I remember him being on there, and he was very good then. So hopefully he's only got better since then. Rhea O'Reilly, Rob Lias, Robbie X, Say Parker, Spike Trivet, Stuart Fulton, Thomas Kerrins, uh, Tom Campbell. Tom Campbell, obviously, from Cultaholic. I've brought him in to be a backstage interviewer kind of guy. think he could be quite good at doing maybe like the Gene Oakland kind of role from back in the, back in the WWF and WCW back in the 90s and the 80s. So maybe that's what role he could do. And then we've obviously got Tucker and, of course, William Regal, who is going to be one of our announcers, and Zoe Lucas. He rounds off our roster. So like I say, any of them who you know, please do. Please do get in touch and let me know any good matches they may have had. And so, yep, let's get into the first show. PWC New Empire Rises. So here we are. Our first ever event is going to be held in the 1865 in southern England. We've got a two-hour show to fill up. So I will be back with you in a second when I've booked it all. Ladies and gentlemen, the show begins with William Regal in the ring. He introduces Premier Wrestling Championship and he brings out who he wants to be one of the main stars of the promotion, Grado. He comes out, he works the crowd, he does what Grado does best until Chris Ridgway and Ashley Dunn both come out separately. They don't want Grado to be the big main guy. They want to be the number one guy. So Regal makes a main event for tonight of a triple threat between all three gentlemen and that will be the last match of the show tonight. And this segment got us a 38 rating. Regal's got a paw for his gimmick. That's disappointing. But Grado, Ridgeway and Dunn have all got adequate. And Ashley Dunn apparently completely messed up. He missed his cue, forgot his lines and even got people's names wrong. Well, Ashley Dunn, that's not a great start, is it? Uh, Chris Ridgway also struggled when going off script. 
Ashley Dunn was poor when trying to improvise dialogues. And, oh yeah, William Regal, for some reason, is a heel. But I couldn't just turn him. So I'm going to slowly turn him face, maybe at the end of the next show on the next video. And so, yeah, William Regal is not done well there. Nobody's particularly done very well there. And so, yeah, 38. Not the best start for a new promotion. But we move on. And we move on to a triple threat match between three high flyers, Joe Nelson, Robbie X and Say Persa. The match only gets us another 37. Disappointing. But it was Say Persa who got the win in 12 minutes 53 when he pinned Joe Nelson, even though Say Persa was the weak link. He only got a 21. For his performance, Robbie X got a 42 and Joe Nelson got a 34. Whoops. And again, everybody's poor. Apart from John Myers, who got an adequate. John Myers is the referee. And yeah, disappointing once again. Let's move on to a 23. Ah, oh, spenny, spenny, spenny. Ben, what have you done? But anyway, in a decent match, Rhea O'Reilly defeated Little Miss Roxy in 11 minutes 39 with a quick cradle. Uh, Rhea O'Reilly had an in-ring of 33. Little Miss Roxy only got a 20. Uh, Rhea O'Reilly's gimmick is very good. That's probably the first positive of the show. And about dragged in the middle despite it only being 12 minutes. Okay. Might have to remember to make the women's matches a bit shorter. But we will see. And moving on, we go to a Kid Lycos promo. He comes out into the ring. He says that it's a travesty that he's not got a match here tonight on the first ever event for Premier Wrestling Championship. He says that he will be on the next show and he will make an impact. And this gets us a 32. Mm, again, not brilliant. But Kid Lycos did not do well without a script. Might have to start scripting everybody. And next up is Debbie Catel versus Zoe Lucas. And this gets us a 34. A little bit better than the other women's match. Debbie Keitel getting the win in 15 minutes 5 by pinfall with a Debbie Downer. I do like that as the name for a finishing move. I do really like that. Debbie Keitel got a 29. Zoe Lucas a 33. Uh, Keitel's gimmick has got adequate. Zoe Lucas is poor. Wow. Nobody really standing out just yet on this show, are they? As following on from that, we have our first ever tag team match. In a decent match, Alex Gracie and Liam Slater defeated the Hunter brothers when Gracie pinned Hunter by using underhanded tactics. He did as Dan Housen instructs people to do. He punched them in the groin. And yep, that is how they got the win. And everyone but Gracie did okay in this. Lee Hunter and Jim Hunter got 34 and 33 respectively. Slater got a 26. But Alex Gracie only getting a 15. Okay. Uh, Jim Hunter has debuted his old school gimmick, as has, as has his brother. They've both got an adequate, as has Alex Gracie. And Liam Slater has got an initial rating of great. So Liam Slater might be one to keep an eye on, might be one to push. And Thomas Kerins, the referee, got an initial rating of awful. How does a referee get an awful rating for a gimmick? Answers below, please, if you know. And then after that, we get a little bit of a brawl between Dan McGee and Danny Jones. Dan McGee is in the ring, insulting the rest of the roster, insulting the crowd, basically being not a very nice guy. 
until Danny Jones comes out and he sticks up for the crowd, the roster, everybody, and they get into a little bit of a brawl that has to be separated by security and staff members. And so this has got us a 26. Dan McGee has debuted his old school Heat Hill gimmick. That's got us an initial rating of poor. And Danny Jones has debuted his Dragon gimmick, which has got an initial rating of great. So Danny Jones might be another one to keep an eye on. Who knows? And now into the main event, which is poor. 22. Oh, not good. Not good at all. Grado got a 26. Ridgeway got a 35. Ashley Dunn only a 17. And about dragged in the middle. Ah. Grado got the win, by the way. He won it in 17 minutes 38 when he pinned Ashley Dunn with a wee boot. And yeah, that was poor. Not a very good show for our first ever event. I'll be surprised if we've got a 30 for the overall rating for the show. And we haven't. 21. Oh, that's poor. That is very, very poor. The fans were disappointed that no storylines were furthered. Okay, maybe storylines might have helped. That's what we're going to start on on the next video. But as for now, that is where we are going to leave it. If you've enjoyed that video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Total Extreme Wrestling content, Pro Wrestling Simulator content, Football Manager content, and a whole load of other stuff which is going to be coming to the channel. So, yep, guys, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time.